Hello and welcome everyone. Today I happened to get my hands in this Agilent system power supply and I thought it could be interesting to comment on the problem it had. Then I'm going to demonstrate some of its features such as the capability to sync and source current and the overcurrent and overvoltage protections. Finally I do some tests concerning its transient performance and its output impedance and compare them to a simpler power supply. So let's start by describing the problem that this power supply presented when I got it. The problem was very simple to solve and I can replicate it for you. So first let's put in the scope in roll mode and hook it to the channel 1 of the supply. Now let's power on the power supply. As we can see everything seems to work fine. However, when a voltage is set to channel 1, the over voltage protection immediately triggers and disables the channel. On the other hand, the second channel works fine. In addition, the output connector of channel 1 was slightly damaged and looked like it had been smashed. So by now you probably have an idea of what the cause of the problem was. And the problem was that the positive sense pin of the connector had a cracked solder joint. Therefore the constant voltage circuit failed to achieve regulation because it couldn't sense the output voltage. For the sake of completeness, now we are going to have a look inside of the supply. The structure of the power supply is pretty simple. There's a control board which includes the GPIB logic, two identical output boards, one for each channel, and a front panel board which handles the keypad and the display, and of course the main transformer. This pin here was the culprit of the problem that I mentioned before. And I'm not sure why such a well-built power supply has output connectors so unprotected. An interesting test that we can do is to measure the transient response of the current limiting circuit. In this test I'm going to set the supply to output 12 volts and limit the maximum current to 100 milliamps. Then I'm going to short its output across a 1 ohm shunt resistor, which we will use to measure the current. Then I'm going to repeat the test with this older HP power supply, model 721A and compare which one is better. In order to achieve a low output noise and a low output impedance during constant voltage operation, a capacitor is typically connected across the output terminals of the supply. Here we can see that the old HP 721A has a 0.1 microfarad capacitor across its output, whereas the newer model has much more output capacitance, 11.8 microfarads in total. However, this capacitor also degrades the current limiting capability because it can deliver undesired high current peaks. Based on the quick look at the schematics, I would expect the old model to have a better transient response than the newer one. Let's see if we are right. So. Let's do the tests. Voltage 
volts current a hundred milliamps as we can see the power supply delivers a current of up to three and a half amps it being limited to a hundred milliamps let's save this waveform of course we can also enable the overcurrent protection and repeat the tests However, the current peak still persists. Now let's try the other power supply. Now the current transient is much smaller, as we expected. So it's surprising how an older and simpler model outperforms this great system power supply in this particular test. Finally, let's demonstrate the capability of this supply to sync current, that is, to work in two quadrants. In order to do so, we can connect both supplies in parallel. The HP721 is set to 12 volts and 100 milliamps of maximum current, whereas the HP6622 is set to 5 volts. If we connect both together, the 6622 forces the 721 to be in constant current mode and sinks, hence the negative sign, 100 milliamps from the other supply. That's a curious feature of this type of system power supplies. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments and see you next time.